All right, Troop Swift here again. Today we're going to be talking about something that we've seen a lot of questions regarding, which is getting your own minis into 3D Canvas. One thing we generally get asked is what the best way to do it is, and that can vary from person to person. But another question we get asked is how to do it, which is something we can explain and what we're going to be looking at today. I'll start by very quickly going over what options are currently available, and then we'll talk in a bit more depth about how to do things like convert STL files properly. The tool I'll be using for this is Blender, which you can get either from Steam for free or from the Blender website, also for free. The easiest way to get your minis into 3D Canvas would actually probably be commissioning a character artist. Uh, that would take a lot of the confusion out of it, and you'd end up with exactly what you want. Speaking of, if anyone out there happens to be a character artist interested in adding 3D canvas to their repertoire, leave a comment below or join our Discord and message me and I'll be happy to explain the technical details of what's required, what you need to know and what the platform's capable of. But anyway, so you can of course also either use the token browser built into 3D canvas, which is this icon of a little person, which gives you access to a library of very high quality painted minis, or you can link your Hero Forge account, as I've spoken about before, and use your custom Hero Forge minis here in 3D Canvas. Hero Forge is a good choice from an ease of use standpoint, but you may not want to go to them for various reasons, um, so we're going to be talking about other methods today. Anyway, as for importing your own minis, the first step to that would be actually acquiring them. There are, broadly speaking, two kinds of places that you can find that'll have them. There's websites aimed at game developers or animators, like say Sketchfab or CG Trader, or websites aimed at 3D printers like My Mini Factory or Empire of Minis. And for our purposes, the 3D printing websites are actually the easiest to deal with. So you might think that a character like this, made for use in a game, would be perfect for 3D canvas. They're low poly, they come pre-textured, they're often rigged, or even in the case of this one, animated, and they often come in a GLTF format, which is the one we use in 3D Canvas. So in theory, all you need to do is slot this into 3D Canvas and you'd be ready to go immediately. The problem is that only some of them are ready to go right out of the box. Some of them come flat packed and require some assembly. Uh, this isn't an issue if you're confident with tools like Blender or if you're a game developer yourself, but if you're not, then I'd recommend being cautious about acquiring this sort of model because it might require a fair bit of tweaking to get working, um, which we won't be going over today. In contrast, models intended for 3D printing, uh, though they will always require converted over to a different format to work, because their purpose is so singular and they all use the same file type, the process for converting them is always very similar and is pretty straightforward. So, say you find a model that you like, like say, we've got this Gunslinger Hero here that's made by Crypto Studios. Let's have a look at what you might find when you get one of these. Uh, they'll all be quite different, so this won't be exactly the same as whatever you end up getting, but broadly speaking, this will be the base kind of concepts. So, you might find that you get different scales of model, uh, which one to use, um, I'm not sure what the best practice is myself to be honest, because the larger scales will tend to be more detailed, which might be good, but the smaller scales will tend to be simpler models and will take being optimised better, so maybe they're better to use. I'd say give it a try with both and see which one you like more. This is a pretty simple process, so it won't take you long to do it. Today I'm going to be going with the 32mm, because I did the 75mm already in the past. So the other thing will be supported and unsupported. So if you've seen 3D printers being used before, you might have seen some models with a lot of extra struts attached to them to support them while they're being printed. Um, a supported model has those struts on it, an unsupported model doesn't. Since we're not actually printing these, unsupported is what we want. And the actual file itself will be an STL file, STL being the standard 3D printing format. This file type won't work in 3D Canvas natively, but that's something we'll deal with when we optimize the model. In order to make use of this, we'll need a tool like Blender, which, as I said before, is freely available on Steam or on their website. I believe they're both the same version currently, so whichever one you prefer. 
And speaking of, let's hop over to Blender just now. So, here we are in Blender. This is just a basic general scene, nothing extra done right now. There's a lot of buttons here and there, but we don't need to pay attention to most of these. The first thing to do is a bit of a tradition to ensure good luck, is to box select these three objects and then hit delete. If this is your first time doing this sort of thing, the first thing to do is to go into Edit, then Preferences, then Add-ons. Then in the search box over here, type in VLTF, and then install the Import-Export add-on that appears. You'll maybe need to click Download, then Install, but it'll be in this window here. Once that's installed, close that. And now we'll want to get our Mini in here. So we'll go to File, Import, and then STL. There's the experimental one there. There's also STL here. So we'll navigate to our Mini. In this case, I just put it in C. So we've got this Minis folder here. We'll go for the 32mm, unsupport it, and there's our file. So we'll just select that and then hit Import STL. And then when Blender's done having to think, there's a good chance it'll be in a slightly odd position. In this case, the model is huge and is rotated back a bit. The controls in here are kind of similar to 3D canvas, so if you've been using that at all, you should be able to get the hang of it fairly quickly. The first thing I like to do with these is to rotate it back into an upright position using the rotate tool over on the left here. It works the same as the one in 3D canvas, so just grab these circles and pull them around to uh, adjust the model. It doesn't need to be exactly perfectly upright, of course. Um, you could spend as much time or as little time as you like. I like to have a look down at the bottom of the feet and see if I can get them being level. But in this case, I'm just eyeballing it. That looks good enough for us. So the next thing to do is to switch over to the Move tool here on the left and then move it so that the feet are standing on this grid on the floor using the arrows, same as 3D canvas. And then move the model itself so that the origin, or this red and white circle, is just below the center of mass, so like below or between the legs of the model usually. This isn't critical, but it makes things easier later. And again, you don't need to be particularly exact as long as it's vaguely in the right place. That should be fine. So now that we've got it upright and centered, something that's not strictly necessary to do, but I like to do anyway, is to make sure it's the right size. The first step for that is up here. If you click on Object, and then Apply, and then All Transforms. That will basically lock in the changes you've made and meet means so that as far as Blender is concerned, the center of the model is now down here at the origin, which is what we want. And speaking of resizing, your model is almost certainly going to be a different size to what this model is. And it can be kind of hard to tell how big something is in a void like this. By default though, these small grid squares on the floor are one meter, and the large squares are 10 meters. So currently you can see that this model fits kind of neatly in between two of these larger boxes so you know it's roughly 20 meters by 20 meters and we'd prefer it if it would nicely fit inside a one meter by one meter size square so it needs to be about 20 times smaller there are two ways to do that the first way is by just doing it freehand using the scale tool on the left grabbing this white outer circle and then just scrolling it down zooming in scrolling it down or if you want to be really precise, you can also use these scale fields on the side here. Let's set it to 0 0.05. All right, so that's the model rotated the right way up. It's standing on the center point and it is the right size. Let's lock that last one in by going to Object, Apply, Scale, and then we can get this model optimized. As a quick aside, I say optimized, but what does that actually mean? Generally, if you're making a model for a game or something, you want to use as few polygons as possible, because every polygon is a little more effort for your computer whenever it's on screen. They use all sorts of very clever trickery to add details to models without adding more polygons, which we won't get into here, that's a whole field. But the thing with 3D printing is they can't use that trickery, because the things that they print have to actually physically exist. 
So, for example, if I turn on wireframe mode, then you can see that this model is made up of quite a lot of polygons. If you loaded this model into 3D Canvas as it is right now, it would technically work fine, but it would slow down the whole scene just by being in it, which is something we'd much rather prefer to avoid. Thankfully, fixing this is pretty easy, what with all these fancy modern tools. We just need to click this wrench on the side here to get to the Modifier Properties tab, click on Add Modifier, and then Decimate. In this little window that appears here, there's only two things we need to pay attention to today. The first is ratio, or how many faces we want to end up with, and face count, which is how many faces we have right now. Or how many polygons, sorry. Face and polygon is basically interchangeable word, don't worry about it. Ideally, we want the face count to be as low as possible. Currently it's 1.1 million, which is way too high for our purposes, but we can only push this down so far before we end up with a bit of a garbled mess. So let's say we want to start by reducing the current poly count to 10% of what it is now. Let's put a 0.1 into ratio here and hit enter. Blender will have a think for a few moments and then show us the result. It is a much better face count, 100,000 rather than a million, but it's still recognizable, so we could go lower. What if we set it to 0.05? Alright, that's looking good. Even lower poly, still recognizable. Let's try 0.025. Alright, so at 0.025 I can see things are starting to break down a little bit. We've got some weird lines here at the mouth, for instance. In theory, you could go in and fix all this up manually, but for now, let's just go back to 5%, or 0.05. Okay, so that is now 58,000 polygons. Could be better, but we're using a single, mostly automated tool here, so these are pretty great results for the amount of time we've spent here. To lock that in, click this little arrow here, and then click Apply. So since we've put that Decimate on, it's looking kind of facety, which is probably not what you want, so the way to sort that is to right click on it and select Shade Smooth and then click on this green triangle thing down at the bottom right. Go down to Normals and click on Auto Smooth. This might work immediately at 30 degrees. If whatever you see after you click that looks great, then you can stop there. This one here looking a bit jank, so let's put that up to 45 degrees. And with that, you can still see a few imperfect bits here and there but those won't really be visible inside 3D Canvas, and especially not if you go on to paint this model. Speaking of, we're going to be talking about painting minis in a video in the near future, but for now we're just going to get this one into 3D Canvas as it is here. In order to do that, we need to go to File, Export, and then GLTF 2.0. So let's find a place to put this, um, just in this minis folder, we'll be fine. You'll want to make sure that over on Format here, it says GLTF Binary GLB. And then under Data, you'll want Compression to be ticked. And then under Animation, you'll want these unticked. Name your model, whatever you like. Let's see, Gunslinger. And hit Export. That will have created a file wherever you decided to save that. So you want to grab that file, put it wherever you put your Foundry data, like your pictures and so on. And then once you've done that, switch back over to Foundry. And then once you're into 3D Canvas, select your token, select Browse Files next to 3D Model here, and then pick out your model. In this case, I've just put it into a My Cool Minis folder. And then select the file and hit Apply. You'll probably also want to apply a material. I quite like the advanced plastic one for its nice matte finish, and then probably give it a bit of colour. And that mini is ready to go as it stands. You may want to take it a bit further and actually paint the model. That's a rabbit hole that can get pretty deep, which is why we'll be talking about that in a future video. For now though, this is a very clean and reliable way to get any STL model you might find into 3D Canvas. So you could use this for players, NPCs, monsters, Anything you can find a 3D printed model of, you can get inside 3D Canvas now. 
for now though, and as ever, we'd love to hear your feedback on our content here. Today's video was covering a subject that I think a lot of people think is very advanced, but I hope we've demonstrated here that if you look at the steps involved, it's overall pretty simple to do. I believe that anybody could do this, really. Either way, that's all for this video. Just a quick one on how to get them in here. We'll talk about painting them later on, and I'll catch you guys later.